Right. Today, this is the fly we're going to be tying. Um, don't really have a name for it, but it is a really good molting crawdad imitation. Um, it also does a really good job at imitating perch. So it could be a craw and it could be a perch. The way that this one is probably more like a swimming crawdad or a perch. Um, you tie this on a jig fly the same way. Um, and then I will tie it with a like a four millimeter bead or like a three millimeter bead or a 3.3 .3, and then I'll literally bounce it off the bottom. I'll pull it and let it meow, boop, meow, boop. so that is uh, it's just a great pattern uh, for the early spring and late fall and generally good all year round honestly. So it's just a, a pattern that I always keep in my box. So, let's get the hook in the vise. Start off here. Okay. So, the hook we're using is a Orient Sun. Um, it's just a wide gap um, barbless streamer hook in a size 12. You could use a Hanuk, you could use a Umqua, you could use just a standard old, uh, like a... Tiemco or a Mustad, you know, something like that. Old school fly hook would be fine too. Um, I prefer to do everything if I can on a barbless. Uh, it just makes life so much easier. All right, so hook and then the bead. So the bead we're using is a 1 8 inch Cyclops in fire orange. Okay. The thread I'm using is UTC 70 in burnt orange. <clears throat> you could use whatever thread, it really not that big of a deal. Um, so for the flashaboo, I'm using red holographic. Uh, the number on that's 6996. And we're gonna be using brown strung marabou. So Strung marabou not being my favorite type of marabou, but it's fine. You just have to use it and work with it. And then uh, body wrap, we're using orange leech yarn. I'm not sure what brand this is, but any orange leech yarn or any leech yarn of your choice, really. <clears throat> All right. First, we're going to get some marabou. Now I can use this. Uh, and with these strung marabou, you know, they're, they're, they're a lot smaller individually than your bigger marabou pieces. So what I'm going to end up doing with this is I'm, I'm going to use both sides at the same time to make the tail of this fly. I'll probably cut off, you know, somewhere in here and then use the rest uh, minus the tip. So let's get that going. Uh, and actually, let's not do that yet. <laughs> Need to put thread on the hook first. That's that's always a good start. All right, let's get some thread on here. Now, um, with this fly, I'm not super concerned about like building a thread dam right here to keep the bead in place because there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we don't need to build that right now or we'll have a gigantic tie-in point, which we really don't wanna do. I just like to get a thread base, at least one layer of thread base when I'm doing marabou or any anything that's real slippery. Um, if you try and put it on the hook shank without putting a thread base down, you'll end up just spinning the thing around and around and around. So, little tip. All right. <clears throat> Marabou time. So, we're going to cut get a pair of junk scissors if you have them. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And these ones aren't terrible. <sighs> So I'll probably actually just cut off somewhere, let's see, somewhere in right about here. Okay, get that right in the trash there. All right, now I've got my piece here. All right, so how I'm gonna do this is make sure I get as many of the fibers on either side, on their respective sides. 
and I'm going to hold it close to the close to the middle um, shank there. And we're going to just find a, I don't want to get these little short ones because they're just going to make the fly look weird. So I always try to start right where they're about as long as the long ones are going to be. So then I, I take this and I heal it and I fold it back onto itself and I grab it with my thumb. And I just kind of repeat that process, peeling, folding, grabbing, peel, fold, grab, peel, fold, grab with your thumb, grab the last bit, fold, grab it all. So now we have a nice little bundle here. We're just gonna whoop, there we go. So I'm just gonna set that aside for a second. So if I try to set this down like it is right now, they're just gonna blow apart. <clears throat> so what I do, and I just twist them in my fingers. You're gonna lose some of the fibers, but it's no big deal. Just twist them. And once you get it like that, that's gonna to stay together pretty good. See what I mean? So now we can set that side nice and gently. Okay. And we're gonna do the same program with this half. Now with these, with all with marabou, and I probably most all feathers, one side of the feather barbels, the, these guys, are longer and one side's shorter. So if you just take these and you take the piece of marabou and you fold it in half and then you rip all the stuff off, you're gonna end up with a, with a marabou bunch that's about that much shorter than the other side. And it looks super funky when you try and tie it into a fly. It looks like the top fly has a big old butt. So what I do, instead of lining these butt ends up, I'm going to take these, since I have, you can't see it, it's on my bench, but I have it set, the big first clump set down. So I'm going to take this clump and I'm going to set it on top, lining the tips up. I'm just going to set it on the top there. And then I take my other hand and I just put my finger on both clumps and then I grab right where the other smaller butt ends are going to end up. And now here I'll show you, see the difference? So that's the one side and that's the other side. And so if I line the butt ends up, you'll end up with this on the end of the fly. The barbels won't line up nice and it looks weird. So this is how I do it to get it all captured together. Once I have it there, do the same thing you did before where you're just gonna twist everything together. And that just gives you a little bit added security of when you're dealing with this marabou and holding it. <clears throat> okay, so now that I'm here, another nice little tip is get a little cap a bottle cap or a cup or something uh you can use your spit if you want to i guess um i prefer not to have my fingers in my mouth and then touching this stuff and then back in my mouth and you know the whole you know germs thing no big deal all right so once i get my water down marabou it's much easier to deal with this way it's not gonna fuzz apart and all this other stuff so i do like that then i can transfer my pinch on my other hand, but before I do that, I'm going to take my fly model here and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to make sure, see where I like it. So basically the end of my finger pinch is where I'm going to cut, right? So that's going to give us the length of our fly. <clears throat> and I like to just have one fly that's modeled right so that I can always use it. I basically use it on every fly. All right, so we got like that. Now I'm going to transfer my pinch. I don't want to go too close and then squeeze because then I'm going to pull it close. So I'm going to come in at an angle like that and just grab it nice and gently. Let off there and I'm just going to take that and nip it right over my trash can so it doesn't make a big mess. All right, so now we have a nice, easy to manage little clump of marabou here. So that's the pro tip of the day. So then I transfer my pinch. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly try and get out some of these really fuzzy parts of the feather. And if you do this again, when it's not wet, you'll end up with a bunch of fuzz going all over the place. And for me personally, I get it all in my nose and you can probably hear me sniffling in all these videos. I get a lot of allergies from these, from the materials, the natural feathers and stuff bother me a little bit. So now it's see nice little bundle in my finger. And it's so easy to deal with. I just throw it away. All right. Now that we're here, I'm going to do, Nice pinch wrap, one more, then I'm going to go kind of large, loose wraps 
up the, the bead. Now I'm going to do a large loose wraps back. Okay. Now I'm going to get a couple nice wraps right there. Boom. I'm not going to worry too much about covering all that up because as soon as we start wrapping and putting the body on it, it's all going to get covered and you're never going to see it. So you don't need to, one, build more here and two, waste a bunch of time. So I'm going to get my flashaboo out here and I'm just going to take one piece, one full piece. I'm just going to cut that baby off. Okay, we have our one piece and I'm just going to fold that in half. Once you have it in half nicely, get your ends lined up. And then I just come in with my scissors and I pull until it gets taut and then I snip. And that gives it a really nice even cut and break it in half without making it a big mess. All right, it's the same thing with these. You wet your fingers and you just wet them. And then they aren't, see how nicely they're together? They're not hard to deal with. It's like one piece to, to tie in instead of having two or three or whatever. You can do this with a whole bundle of these too, just like the Marabou. <clears throat> Surface tension is your friend. All right. So we're going to do that. We're just going to tie that in. I just go about halfway up the shank that locks in that one piece because we'll, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this piece over. I'm just going to turn my vise. You're, See if you can make it so you can see it all come under here. Now I'm going to come around with my thread and I'm going to come about halfway down the shank. Now I have to do it this way, sorry. Right, let me get my hands out of the way here. Hang on now. All right, so I'm going to get our pieces here. See how fast they dried out? All right, so I'm going to come over about halfway and I'm going to bring my my material over until I like where it's sitting and then I'm going to lock it in. I just make sure that everything gets lined up so it's not, you know, so I don't want this piece coming up here. I don't want it going down there. I want it right in the middle. I want it to be right on the, like a lateral line kind of situation. Okay. Now we're going to bring our thread up to the front. Now I'm going to get just a little more water on this. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to find my ends and I'm just going to whoop, cut those off. There we go. Beauty. All right. Now we're going to tie in our leech yarn. So another little tip, and I mean, I don't know if anyone else does. This is what I do. I don't like to cut off six inches of this stuff and then use it on three flies and then end up with, you know, enough to just do a nothing. So what I do is I keep it in the bag, keep it on the roll. I just pull it out a little bit. I get myself, you know, a little bit of distance on it. And then I just, I don't put it in the little thing there, I, I wrap it around the bottom loop there, and I just push it all back in the bag and then put the zip it back up. Now I have a little package, right? It doesn't come apart, it's not gonna unravel, and I'm not gonna waste a bunch of material. So, <clears throat> with the rotary vise especially, it makes things a lot easier. If you don't have a rotary vise, it's a little harder to do because you gotta take the whole pack and wrap it around your with your hand. Um, which I can understand you would want to cut, but all right. So I'm just going to tie that in. Um, <clears throat> another thing that's kind of important with this stuff is finding the direction that this stuff's tied in at. So like I, that's another reason why I like to just go off the package because the package is kind of facing the right direction. Typically, if you just take it and tie it into the fly, like I just did with this fly, how oh, I tied it in facing the direction it came out of the package. Now, when I wrap it, this stuff is actually going to wrap the opposite direction, so it'll start facing those these things that way. So it just makes the fly a lot better. I'm going to clean up a little bit there. Just now You can kind of see what I'm talking about, how our tie-in point's already getting built up nicely. So we don't need to go crazy with the bead. And once we get everything wrapped, it's going to be so tight in there, you're not going to be able to get any more thread. So, all right. So for this, um, <clears throat> whichever direction you're going to wrap it, doesn't really matter since this isn't getting body wrap over it. So you can go this way, you can go this way. I just go this way because it's easier on the rotary. So I'm not going to train these fibers quite yet. I'm, I want to 
do a little bit when you're doing it, but you don't want to pull them super fast, super far back. All right, I'll get my thread out here a little bit. And you can put your bob in, in a cradle if you want to. Um, it's not that big of a deal with the way that this is, so. All right, one over the top, another one over the top, a couple over the back, one over the top, a couple over the back. I do that three times, usually, to lock everything in. And I don't like to come in and with a big wide scissor and snip like that. You come in with your scissors tight, then you open them just enough to get to the, the center cord. And then I just run my scissors forward and then just barely start to squeeze and it pops off. It's more like I'm pulling it through that to cut it. And it leaves, leaves a real nice end right there so it doesn't fray them as bad. Um, and then you don't risk cutting a bunch of the fibers too. So that's part of what I was getting at. If you come in like this and you cut, right, and you have all a bunch of fibers that you don't realize you get like that, you're going to ruin this fly because you're going to cut all those. Th th we want that. We don't want to get rid of that. So you got to... With all, with all, most flies when you're cutting the anything, I come in like with a closed scissor and I open the scissor where I want to cut, boom, nip it, right? So that you're not coming in like, ah, sum, dum, dum, and you're just going to cut off a bunch of stuff, right? Which you don't want to cut off a bunch of stuff. We want the stuff. Stuff is good. All right. From right here, I'm going to whip finish this fly real quick. We're not done. I'm just putting a little security whip finish in here. Okay, I'm just gonna hang my bobbin this time. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tease out all these fibers. So with this leech yarn, they're really long fibers. And when you wrap them, they wanna see how they're all wrapped around that hook. If you just start training this back when you're wrapping that stuff, like you would with like a CDC or something, um, you'll end up having this like weird spot right here. And it doesn't work right. The fly's not right. So I come in and I just get as many of these fibers unwrapped from that hook shank as I can. Some are not going to unwrap because they're trapped, but this is fine. We just want to get all the loose ones as much as we can out. Any bulky spots, we want to try and get those out. So now we're getting it trained out. It's going to be a lot of chaos for a second here. So that's fine. Again, this is all part of why you do the whip finish there. This because you're gonna, you know, you kind of get get you gotta get involved with this thing. And if you have a bobbin just hanging out there and you don't have it whip finished, you, you're gonna unravel and you're gonna lose the whole thing. Have to start over. So okay, so now we got some chaos in this fly going. <clears throat> Now, that might be a good name for this fly, the Chaos Crawl. I think that's what it is. There you go. You guys just heard it right here, the Chaos Crawl. All right, so now I'm going to train these back. And this thing does ca cause chaos when you fish it, so it works really well for the name. I like it. All right, so I want to train these back, kind of pull them, get every one I can, the long fibers, and I'm going to cut them right at the end there. But ba boom. All right. Now, we're going to leave our cradle in place here, because uh, we're going to use it in a second. Um, we are going to put a collar of dubbing around this uh, thread wraps here. And that is going to just finish this fly off real nice. So, <clears throat> I'm using ice dub in rusty brown. Um, you know, you could, you could play with any, you could do peacock, I mean, you know, you can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. If you like a color that works better, do it. Do it. You don't need permission. All right. So I'm just going to grab out some ice dub here. I'm going to go one pinch. That's actually probably like two. So we'll have to call that one two pinches, and we'll call this one three. Okay. So now I'm going to put those down on my bench. Again, you guys aren't going to be able to see it right there, but it's there. All right. So I'm going to take these, and then I'm going to just kind of pull not tight i don't want to break the fibers i just want to un 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 untwist them from each other and we're just trying to kind of like straighten out as many of these fibers right now as we can okay so now that i have you know they're looking messy but they're still for the most part straight across so i'm going to just take them and i'm going to go one pinch and i'm going to set it down i'm going to take another pinch 
And I'm going to set it right underneath that one. And then I'm going to take a third pinch and I'm going to put that underneath that one. So we're creating a little, a little stack. Now I'm going to do a dubbing noodle. Uh, this one doesn't need to be big, but you don't need it to be super tiny. You don't want it hard to deal with. Okay. And I'm going to just come back, you know, right about there, about half a bead. Now, I'm going to set that there. Okay, I wrapped it twice right before I brought it over, so I'm just going to unwrap those two because I'm going to do a two-turn whip finish, so I don't want to keep building. Don't do that. There we go. Okay. Whip finish done. Set aside. Let's get rid of any of these extra fibers we don't like around the bead there. Okay. Now, we're going to take our dubbing loop here. Make sure you got it. Not twisted. There we go. Now I'm gonna hold this open with one hand with two fingers. You can do one, but I like two fingers. All right. We're gonna take this chunk and we're just gonna ooh, just blew it apart. We're gonna set it on there and pinch it all in. Kind of blew apart, but that's okay because we pinched it, so we can readjust it how we want it. Put those right. There we go. Right in the middle. Okay. This and I want to spread these fibers out a little bit. I don't want them to be a big clump. Because <clears throat> when I tie it in, it's going to, it'll be a big clump in the bottom. We want to keep everything nice. I'm going to pull that chunk out. All right. There we go. I'm going to just twist it up here. Okay. Get it twisted not too much. Okay, now I'm gonna, same kind of deal. We're gonna work on getting these fibers unraveled from the, from the shank, from the noodle that we created there. And once my, I just kind of peel that off so I can collect more if I need to. Set that aside for the next fly. Oh, come on you. There we go, get there, okay. And we're thinning this out a lot, this dubbing noodle, so it's okay. You want it to be, you don't want to have a big giant noodle in there. All right, so now see how we got a nice little thin sparse noodle in there? That is what we want, so I'm just going to give it a couple more twists here, and I flick it like that, okay? It just gets all the fibers kind of popping out. All right, so now we're going to do our first wrap close to the this side. Now I'm going to train everything back here. Really work on getting those back now. Make a wrap and then just train. Train everything back. Make a wrap and just train everything back. Just do that every single time. Every single time. It takes a couple, it can you know, it takes a little bit of just kind of manipulating these fibers to get them to want to kind of go back, but once you do, and then you're Good, and you got the fiber there, and you can bring that back. See, boom. Now, I'm going to train all those over before I do that. Okay. Now that we're here, I'm going to take and just go around two or three times. Two is usually good for this first one. Then easily bring that up. Makes a little knot. Then we're going to capture that knot. I'm going to do it one more time. This one, I'm going to do three. I'm going to hang that, and then I'm just going to Capture everything nicely, how I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna whip finish it, just like this. Make sure you got fibers out of the way. There's a four turn. I'm just gonna push with my thumb right here while I tighten. Okay, oops, sorry about all the movement there. Wiggling everything. All right. One more four turn whip finish, just to lock it in place. These predator flies, these the fish just seem to destroy them a lot faster. So that extra whip finish just really helps. And I'm just gonna come in here and nip that off. Okay. All right. So now what I what I will do um, after the video. 
um, is I'll go to the sink. If you actually have like a cup of hot water or something like that, I'll take this and I will sit, let it run in the hot and get these fibers to get loose and hot and train them back. And then I hit it with cold water once everything's trained. And then it, it will, the fly will stay basically like this once you do that. It'll stay where the fibers are going back. And um, if you don't do that, it still works really good, but all this stuff, will, these fibers will stay kind of puffy like that. And if you like that, then go with it. I like this streamlined look uh, personally. And it really like sh gets like a, like a shell of iridescent, um, like translucent body to this fly. Uh, all the flies I do like this style, they, they're they just, they just look very good. They have an amazing translucentness to them at the right angle. So uh, that's what they'll end up looking like. And I, I highly recommend doing the water training, um, hot water for a few minutes or a few seconds, whatever, till everything looks, you'll see it'll, it'll, everything will come back nice. I'll even take my fingers and kind of wiggle it when I'm doing that. So there you go. Hit it with the hot water, then shock it with the cold and then just take a little paper towel or a rag or something and you know get the majority of the water out and then just set it out to dry you know it's a little bit of a process you don't even have to do that if you don't want to i take that extra step and personally i think it makes a huge difference especially when you're doing still water stuff and you're not moving this fly very fast you know if you're just creeping it you're barely moving it it looks so much better when when it stays, you know, streamlined instead of being like put. So anyways, personal preferences, give them a shot, tie some up, have fun. Remember there are no rules. You do what you want to do when it comes to fly tying. If you like a different color, different size, different shape, do it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't.